As we have successfully read the data in streaming fashion and printed on the screen, now let us explore relevant data frame APIs to process data. We can also use Spark SQL approach and write queries to take care of the processing instead of using data frame operations. However, I will be limiting the scope to data frame operations as part of this topic. If we have to use the same session where we actually printed the data in streaming fashion, uh, it is not possible because if we hit Control c it will come out of the SBT console completely. When we start exploring the APIs to process the data, if we do that as part of streaming approach um, in SBT console, every time uh, we make a mistake, we have to hit Control c and we'll be coming out of the session and it will be a bit lesser productive. For that reason, first I will come up with the data processing logic using data frame APIs on top of data that is read using spark.read rather than spark.readStream. Once we get this uh, data processing logic using appropriate data frame operations APIs, then we'll actually refactor the code in such a way that we read the data in streaming fashion instead of in batch mode, and then we'll actually apply the logic to process the data. That being said, let me launch SBT console here. We have already seen all these things here, starting from this to this, where we actually created this Spark context. So we have imported com.typesafe.config, once that is done, we have actually um, uh, read the properties um, by passing dev as argument. Uh, once the properties are loaded into a object called as conf of type config, then we have imported a, a Spark session from org.apache.spark.sql. And using that Spark session, we have built uh, a Spark session type object by name Spark. Once that is done, we have actually set the log level to error and then we set spark sql shuffle partitions to two so that we don't uh, use the resources abnormally rather we use only two threads to process the data because our uh, data volume is not very big and then we have imported this spark dot implicits dot underscore which actually give us handy operators such as dollar to uh, pass the column names to api such as select to where etc once this is done i can read the data by saying where lines equal to as i want to read data in batch mode I just have to say spark.read and our original data is being written to opt genlogs logs access.log. As each line is nothing but a log message, which is a free flowing string, uh, I can actually say spark.read.text uh, where I can read each and every line in that uh, access.log file as one record without uh, multiple columns there will be only one column and that column name will be value which you will be seeing very soon and then we can give the fully qualified path of the log file name which is nothing but opt gen logs and then logs and then access dot log now we got the um, uh, data from that log file into a data frame called as lines with uh, one column which is nothing but value you can actually see the data in the data frame by saying show of false so that we can get the entire record rather than just getting part of it. You can see here, this is IP address, this is the date, this is uh, endpoint, so on and so forth. So from this, we will try to compute the department uh, count every minute. However, uh, uh, to get the department count, we can ignore the records which doesn't have department-based endpoints such as departments, logout, support, so on and so forth, and only consider those endpoints which have department uh, uh, at the beginning and then the department name. Uh, once we filter, we need to get the department name. Along with department name, I also want to get the timestamp so that I can actually perform count um, uh, of department traffic, department-wise traffic every minute. So we'll apply all that logic as we proceed further. So lines is the data frame, which have uh, uh, all the records that are there uh, in access.log um, as of um, the execution of the show API, okay? Now what I can do, I can get only the lines which have department in them. For that, I can say department lines as the variable name, and then I can say lines dot. Either filter or where, you can use uh, uh, any of the APIs to filter the data from a data frame, uh, if you want to use data frame operations uh, approach. And then our column name is value, and we have to apply split to extract this information and compare. To apply split and uh, extract this information, first I need to import. So the way I can import the relevant functions is by saying import org.apache.spark.sql.functions and then split. And now split is exposed and we can use that to split the data and then uh, filter for the lines which have department in them. Now I can say val department lines equal to 
lines dot either we can use where or filter both are uh, almost same they are synonyms to each other and then we can actually say split and we have to use split twice first time we have to split by space and then get this once we we get the endpoint again we have to split by forward slash and get this and we have to compare that with uh, hard coded value department so the way we can do it is like this so first we have to split by space and then the split has to happen on dollar value uh, so we have to specify that once we split by space we can actually say off six to get the endpoint once we get the endpoint again we have to split by forward slash and we have to say off one to get this part of the endpoint as long as this is equal to department we want to consider those records otherwise we want to ignore so i can say like this and then we can actually say department lines dot show and then false so that we can actually see the entire record and you you can see now we only get those lines which have department endpoint in them others are ignored once we get this we can actually extract the information we need uh, i want to get this part as department name and then i want to get this part as timestamp so this format is not standard timestamp format this is a date which is represented as string we have to apply two timestamp function and convert this string to actual timestamp itself and then we want to use that um, uh, to get the count every minute for each department the way we can do it is you can actually copy this and then you can say sequence of paste the, the date which is uh, of type string in this case and then say 2df it will create a data frame and we can apply uh, necessary logic to convert uh, this data frame which have uh, uh, a column with name value of type string and there is only one record you can actually validate by saying show here and that will return the date now i want to apply the logic to convert into timestamp where we'll be seeing the data frame with whatever name it is and then the data type should be timestamp we cannot just use two timestamp directly instead what we have to do is we have to um, actually say select and then two timestamp we have not imported two timestamp yet here so we have to first import two timestamp so i have to say import org dot apache dot spark dot sql dot functions and then two timestamp we have already imported split earlier to filter now we have imported timestamp also now as the timestamp is imported i can actually say select of two timestamp and then we have to pass the column name which is nothing but uh, dollar value here and then i have to specify the format using which i can read the string and convert into timestamp so the format is dd mmm because we have three character month uh, so feb will be converted to 02 if we specify format like this and here is yyyy and then uh, if you say hh it will represent hours in 12 hour format in this case i want to represent hours in 24 hour format that's why i'm using capital hh and then mm for minutes if you specify small mm it will be uh, minutes and then you can actually say dot show and hit enter now you can see that the date which is of type string is converted to standard timestamp format even if you actually say print schema it will actually give the data type of that field as timestamp so we need to apply this logic however if we have to apply the logic directly when we actually split by space and read the third element it will actually give this part which have this square bracket so we have to trim off this square bracket also before we apply this logic which we have explored just now to convert a string uh, which contain date in this format to actual timestamp so let's uh, uh, build that logic we'll be improvising on the same data frame which is created by using this filter and then i will be saying with column the first column which i want to get is nothing but department name and the way i can get the department name is by using the split logic only difference is i have to say off two here that will give us the department name we can validate by saying department lines dot show and hit enter you can see the actual record and then department name we will improvise further on this by saying with column and then visit time so first we have to extract the date part for that i have to say split and then value and then we have to split by space once that is done we have to say off three which will give us the date part of the log message and then we can uh, hit enter and then we can validate the data by saying department lines dot show 
you see there is this uh, square bracket i want to first trim it off for that i have to import the trim function so on top of the import statement which we have seen earlier where we have imported two timestamp i will also try to import l trim and also split which we have already imported even if we do not include two timestamp and split here it is fine but i want to consolidate all those functions which are being used uh, while extracting the uh, time and department from our log messages and hence i have done this and now we can actually go back and then filter the data once the data is filtered first we'll be getting the department name and then we'll be getting the date however the date have the square bracket to eliminate that square bracket i can say l trim here and then i can actually left trim the square bracket like this we can validate by saying department lines dot show now you see as part of the date there is no square bracket as the square bracket is removed now i can actually convert these dates of type string into the timestamp itself and for that i have to go back filter for the department records once that is done get the department name and as part of this logic what i'll be doing is i'll be using two timestamp and then the format uh, in which the data is represented uh, as of now which is nothing but dd mmm yyyy colon hh mm and i don't want the second part and hence i am discarding the second part here now i can hit enter and i i can actually say department lines dot show now you got the original record the department name and the date in the form of timestamp you can validate by saying print schema here it has three fields value of type string department name of type string and with it time as timestamp i don't want value anymore uh, while getting the uh, department wise traffic every minute and hence i will be dropping the value so i just want to improvise the code here for department lines by saying where and then by getting the department name and then by getting the uh, timestamp from the uh, event log messages and then by saying drop dollar value and now the department lines have only two fields one is the department name and second one is visit time using this information we should be able to compute the department wise traffic so i am creating a variable called as department traffic to compute the department traffic however we need to use a function called count and hence we need to import that also by saying org dot apache dot spark dot sql dot functions dot count once the count is imported now i can say val department traffic equal to department lines dot group by and when i group by i want to group by first on visit time and then on department name once you group by you can use ag and then say count because we have already imported count and then give the department name as argument you can either use department name or visit time so when it comes to count you can check the syntax about how we can actually pass the argument you can see that the column can be passed as string or uh, column and hence we can either say uh, department name directly like this or we can also say dollar if we don't have any uh, logic which actually derive a different value from the existing column we can directly pass it as string itself there is no need to use dollar that's why we are directly using the uh, field names as strings as part of group by also once we get the count i want to give the alias and the alias i want it to be as department count and then hit enter so there seems to be something missing here let us uh, fix the issue once we group by then we have to perform count so we need to have another bracket here because uh, this entire logic is part of yag first we are trying to get the count using the department name and then renaming the uh, aggregated field to department count so that we have some meaningful name to the field and hit enter now you can see that department traffic is of type data frame and it has three fields visit time department name and the department count you can actually say department traffic dot print schema to get the schema details and then show to get the actual output so we have the timestamp rounded at minute level and then the department name and the count the department is accessed in that minute so this is how you can actually come up with the data processing logic using whatever data frame operations you want to use as per your requirement however the only difference from our problem statement is that we are reading data from static file using spark.read.txt rather than uh, reading data from kafka topic hence we need to refactor the code where we are reading data from uh, files um, using spark.read.txt to uh, the apis relevant for 
reading data in streaming fashion, which is nothing but Spark dot read stream, and then format with Kafka and by passing all the options that are required to read data from Kafka topic. So let's go ahead and uh, improvise on top of this, where we'll be refactoring the code to read the data from Kafka topic and use whatever logic we have built here uh, for the uh, data processing. And we'll try to see how to print the results on the screen so that we can validate end-to-end -end, um, uh, logic where we read the data from Kafka topic, apply the data processing logic using data frame operations, and then uh, print the results onto the console. Once we validate that, we'll actually improvise further by refactoring the right part to re write the data into the HBase table.